Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this hobby boss VK4502P Vorna. Vorn? Vorne? I don't know how to say it, but I do believe that Vorna means in front, which of course relates to the positioning of the turret. This is a model I built about 400 years ago, and I'm finally getting around to painting it. Well, finishing the paint job anyway, it had been sitting incomplete for a long time. If you want to see the build video, there's a link in the description below. Pause this video and go check it out. Or don't pause it and watch both at the same time. Be efficient. Because this kit has an interior, at least in the turret, it seemed to me that painting said interior would be a sensible first step. I primed it with a light grey primer of some variety, I've forgotten which, and it doesn't really matter. You can see that I've got a bit of primer on the outside of the turret too, and that doesn't matter either. I airbrush a base coat of Vallejo model colour ivory. I pretty much just spray it all over everything, because most of the things in here are going to be this colour. This is a light colour, obviously, so it's a good idea to use a light primer like I've done. You can of course do this over a black primer, but you'll have to apply more coats, and it'll be a bit more of a pain in the butt. I'm not sure if this is anywhere near the correct colour for the inside of a German tank, and I'm sure I had a reason for choosing this colour at the time, but it was a long time ago and I can't remember. More than likely though I just looked at some reference pictures and decided, sure, this is close enough, and it is. In the end it looks fine to me, and it won't be all that visible anyway. Next, it's time to paint some of the detaily bits inside the tank. Nothing too complicated, it's mostly going to be hidden inside of a dark turret. I used Vallejo Model Air Steel and painted the inside of the gun breech with it. I wasn't quite sure how much of the breech would actually be this colour, but I figured what I have here is fine. Then I paint the stock of the coaxial machine gun, and for some reason my notes don't say what colour I've used here, but it's brown. I then painted the seats with Vallejo model colour black grey. I'm pretty sure the seats should be something like this colour. It's probably not an exact match and that'll probably cause somebody to piss their pants, but it'll do. It's dark enough that it'll have a good contrast with the rest of the interior. I'm assuming that the seats will be kind of hard to see through the hatches though. I use the same colour on this pair of gauges, which probably have something to do with monitoring the sauerkraut levels in the tank. I can't imagine what else they'd be for. This tube, which seems to be for spent machine gun casings, gets the black grey as well. These little doodads aren't too fiddly to paint, as long as you're careful. It is easy enough to fix mistakes, especially at this early stage, but it's even easier to go slowly and carefully to avoid making mistakes in the first place. The ammo gets painted next, and I used Vallejo Model Air Bright Bronze for the casings. It took a few coats to get a good opaque finish. I thought about doing some highlights on these, but then I figured, well they're pretty much not going to be seen through the turret rear hatch, I just leave them this way. For the business portion of the rounds, I used black. My notes don't say which black I used, so I'm assuming it would have been a black primer, because that just works really well as a basic black paint, and I do it all the time. I don't know anything about German tank ammo, so these colours are probably wrong, and I'm sure I'll be arrested for the horrendous crime of not painting the ammo correctly, and not representing an accurate load of AP and high explosive ammo or something like that. I am unrepentant. I decided to keep using the black on the interior portions of the machine gun, just in case it might be visible. I also used it on the gunner's side. I didn't do any highlighting or anything like that, because I figured it would be kind of redundant. Let's dirty up this pristine ivory interior. Here I'm using Army Paint a dark tone, mixed roughly one part dark tone to three parts water. I'm pretty much just slopping it all over everything inside the turret. It's not that heavy, but it might be a little bit too much for a tank that's only been used in testing, which is what I'm trying to represent in painting this model. I think it looks good though, and it really brings out the details, which is kind of the point. You can see that I didn't bother painting the shells where they wouldn't be seen. More evidence of my terrible, terrible crimes. The brazen criminal flaunts the evidence! Anyway, that's the interior done. It is a simple interior paint job, it's just good enough to look like there's some detail inside from about an arm's length. Now let's paint the exterior. I primed the exterior of the model in black, mostly because that'll work better for the dark base coats, for which I've used Vallejo model colour German grey, because it's going to be a grey tank and it's German. 
But Herbert, that's not the correct shade of German grey. <laughs> Maybe just for once, try not to be that guy. As you can see, I'm airbrushing this colour all over the model, except for the interior of course, and to prevent paint getting on the interior, I've plugged up the openings in the turret with blue tack, which is a very useful product you may also know as poster putty or something like that. I've painted this tank in sub-assemblies, and that's not usually something I like doing, but since this tank is more or less one colour, there's no need to worry about things like matching camo patterns on the various parts, so it wasn't really a problem. I airbrush on a fairly gentle highlight, using a mix of one part model colour London Grey to three parts German Grey, and I spray it onto the upper surfaces of the tank. This is mostly to represent the light, presumably from the sun, shining directly down onto the tank, but it also works as a little bit of fading. I follow that with some brushed highlights. I made a mix of roughly 50-50 German grey with London grey, and I'm using a makeup brush to dry brush the edges and raise details of the model. This is pretty simple, I'm sure you've all seen dry brushing before. The makeup brush in question is a cheap domed contour brush. There's always one chud who's all like, Hahaha, <laughs> you use makeup! Very original. I don't care because the result is a nice, smooth highlight without any scratchiness. I did the final assembly and then left the tank to sit for about 600 years. That's not an important part of the process, but if you want, you can do that too. You can definitely see the difference in cleanliness of the cutting mat, and also the colour and white balance of the camera is different. In fact, it's a different camera altogether. I cleaned the dust off the model, and noticed the little ring bit, I guess you would call it, on the bottom of the turret was white and could do with some grey paint, so I painted that with the German grey. I also decided that I wanted the highlighting to be a little bit more prominent. Not too much, just a little bit. I figured plain London grey would be good for this highlight, and I'm not unhappy with it, but looking at it now, it could be just a little bit darker. Oh well, this is fine as well. This highlight is, once again, done with the makeup brush, pretty much in exactly the same way as the previous dry brushing, nice and simple. With the base coats done, I applied a coat of gloss varnish to the turret sides, because now is the time for decals. This kit doesn't really come with much in the way of choice in regards to markings, and if that isn't sufficient, you can always source aftermarket decals. I've decided to keep it simple and just use the crosses. I wanted them on the turret sides, and ideally I would have liked them to be a little bit further forward, but the shape of the turret, particularly on the left side, made it look a bit weird, so I just placed them a bit further back. I move on and do the chipping, which I do in the usual way I do chipping, with a bit of sponge. I'm using artist's sponge here because I'm just fancy like that, and it cost me a whole two dollars or something like that. You can use this or the foam packaging you might find in a model kit or something, or maybe even the kind of sponge you would use for cleaning. If you're unfamiliar, the method is dip the foam in your chipping colour, remove most of it like you would with dry brushing, and then dab it onto the model in an up and down motion. Apply it to areas that are likely to be chipped, and be careful not to drag it along the model's surface, because when you do that it looks like a smear of paint instead of chips. The colour I've used here is Ammo by MIG chipping colour. I wanted this tank to be fairly new, like maybe it's just been tested and not yet sent to the front, so I didn't really want to go overboard with the chipping, but I did want some. And it is kind of hard to see the chips against a dark colour, which makes it a bit hard to know if I've gone overboard or not, but they are there, and I think I did a fairly good job of restraining myself. I also took a fine brush and the same chipping colour, and applied a couple of longer scratches here and there. Not very many though. I mostly did this around the towing cable brackets, and I have misplaced those cables, but I was, from the beginning, not sure that I was going to add them anyway. I can't remember why, I think maybe I just didn't really like them. Anyway, the story here is they've gone missing. Hans probably stole them for whatever nefarious purposes he has. Painting the tracks seemed like a good thing to do at this point, so that's what I did. I'm using rust tracks from Ammo by MIG here because why not? This would have obviously been a bit easier if I'd left the tracks off the model and airbrushed them. The problem with that though is that then I don't have a completed model for the build video, so I rarely do it. And it's not like painting the tracks by hand is hard, it's just a bit time consuming. 
I did want to leave the tips of the sprocket teeth that you can see poking through the tracks in the base grey colour, which would have been dead simple if the tracks weren't glued in place and initially I figured I would just paint the rust colour around them, but it quickly became too annoying, so I'll just paint a grey colour onto the teeth later on. I am, of course, being relatively careful around the wheels, but they do have a rim, which will be a steel colour later on, so that does give a bit of a buffer for making mistakes. We don't have that quite so much at the sprockets, but it does mean there are fewer areas where you have to be extra careful. There are spare track links on the rear of the engine deck, and it's probably a good idea to paint those too. You can argue whether or not they would be painted the same colour as the hull or not, I don't care. I think it's more interesting to look at if they're a nice rusty colour, it breaks up the grey a bit. Now for some Metallica, I mean metallics. I decided it would be nice to try out the gunmetal from the Ammo by MIG Tools colour set. This shovel is a tool, so it makes sense to paint it with paints from a tool colour set. It's not a bad paint, and I apply it to the metal parts of the other tools, obviously. However, I do prefer the Scale 75 black metal. I kept using this though because, well, I already started and it does look decent. I painted the fire extinguisher with this colour too. It is kind of tempting to paint them bright red like the fire extinguishers you might see in real life, but I think it makes more sense that this would be bare metal or the colour of the hull. I chose this colour, obviously. Next, handles for the tools. On the handles of the wire cutters, I applied the Bakelite colour from the Tools Colours Pack. The bottle actually says Red Brown Base. The bottle and the box do have the same product number though, so it's not the wrong paint. I guess it just makes more sense to label it as Bakelite on the box, so you know what it's for. I suppose that makes sense. Anyway, for the other tool handles I used new wood, because, well, they're wooden, and I figured they would be new tools because it's a new tank. Whether or not that's how it would have been done I don't know, but it's a good story. Not that you really need a story to justify a colour choice, but it's fun anyway. Can't forget the gun cleaning rods, which is what I'm assuming these are. I thought about doing them in a slightly darker colour, but then I didn't. I used a smaller brush to paint along the edges to make it a bit easier to avoid making mistakes. Then I filled in the remaining bigger area with a bigger brush. Made sense to me. Next, I used Scale 75 black metal and painted the machine guns, both the one in the hull and the turret mounted one. This is obviously pretty simple, just put the paint on the gun barrel and not the surrounding bits of tank. I also put a little bit of this on the business end of the wire cutters because the colour is a little bit brighter and more shiny than the gun metal I painted them with, and I thought this would add a tiny bit of interest. Now, washers. I did say that I wanted new looking tools, but this wood colour is way too clean looking. So I applied Army Painter Light Tone, which was thinned roughly 50-50 with water, but I found it wasn't quite dark enough for what I wanted, so I just applied it neat straight from the bottle. Unsurprisingly, you can see that it's a lot darker. I apply this all over the wooden parts, but I am deliberately trying to leave it a little bit patchy so that it looks like there are subtle variations in the colour. Obviously this also goes on the other tool handles, not just the rods on the tank's ride. You do have to be a little bit careful with this so it only goes on the areas you want it, but I would also say that the occasional speck of this getting onto the hull wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It could just be a bit of dirt or something, if it's even visible. Next, I apply Army Painter Dark Tone to the wire cutter handles, because why not? It's more or less the same thing as the wooden handles. I then decided why not add some of this to the wooden handles, because this time I do want it to be very light, I've thinned it 50-50 with water. I used the excess on the fire extinguisher and the vents on the engine deck. I don't think it's going to change how these look a whole lot, but it does give them a bit of discoloration which might be nice. Then I remembered that the machine guns were still quite shiny, so I got the dark tone out again and gave them a fairly heavy undiluted coating of it. I then applied some gloss varnish to protect the acrylic paints from the perils of enamel paint, the first of which I applied being the MIG Productions track wash on the tracks. A strange place to put that I know. Ha ha ha! New and original jokes. This is rather dark, and if you want more of the rustiness beneath it to show, you could thin it out a bit or you could use a brush with thinner on it to remove some later on. I was pretty happy with how this went on though. 
Of course, a little bit of care should be taken around the wheels, sprockets and bits of the hull near the tracks, but this is easy enough to remove with a clean brush with some thinner on it. Or if you do get this where you don't want it, you could just blend it into the paintwork a bit to make it look like dirt or a stain of some sort. I apply it to the spare track links on the engine deck as well, because, well, that just makes sense, doesn't it? And here, you can see that I'm cleaning the enamel from the areas I don't want it, like the hooks holding the spare track links on and the sides of the hull. I also applied a little bit of MIG standard rust effects to the spare track links. It doesn't make a huge difference, and it's pretty close to the base colour anyway, but I guess it does add a little bit of variation, so why not? Then I add a tiny bit of the standard rust effects to the metal parts of the tools. I remove most of it, so there's just a subtle kind of hint of a rusted look here. I also streaked a tiny bit of it down from the shovel, because I thought that might look interesting. I followed that with some MIG Productions Wash for Desert Sand Base, and I know this tank doesn't really have anything to do with the desert or sand, but I've used this anyway, and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm using this in the various gaps like around the panels on the engine deck, in recesses and corners, and in the sections of cut armour where the ends are fairly roughly cut and interlocked. I'm not sure I'm describing that very well, but I think you know what I mean. You can see what I'm doing anyway. Basically I'm putting this anywhere that I want to be a bit darker or dirty looking. Then I remove a lot of it. This is pretty much what I do with enamels, and I do like that you can apply and remove paint over and over until you've got the result you want. There's a couple of ways I'm doing this, either by dipping the brush in thinner and wiping most of it off and then just kind of shifting the enamel around, or by leaving the brush full of thinner and spreading the enamel around in a more liquidy way. And this is the kind of thing I would encourage you to experiment with to see how it works and what you like or don't like. This is mostly meant to be in the gaps and such, but I'm also using it as a kind of dirt on some of the flat areas. I don't really want it to be too heavy anywhere, but it should, mostly, be heavier in the gaps and recesses. When I'm doing this, particularly on the flat areas, I try to brush it in the direction that rain would run off the tank. That way, if there's any streakiness, it should look a bit more natural. If you do see areas where this is kind of pooling up and you don't want so much of it there, you can use the brush to kind of flick it off the model. It is a kind of messy process, but that's alright by me. Also, messy does look a bit more natural. I left that to dry, and at some point I realised I didn't paint the jacking block on the hull rear. I could have just said, hey it got painted with the rest of the hull, but I would prefer it to be a different colour, if only to break up the grey. So I got out the new wood again and painted it, nothing too tricky about that. Then it was time to paint the sprocket teeth that can be seen through the holes in the track links. I tried model colour London grey and model air German grey. The German grey was a little bit too dark to see really, so I went with the London grey. It's a bit lighter than I really wanted, but that's okay, and it does help it to stand out a bit. I follow that by painting the rims of the road wheels. I'm pretty sure these are metal and should be a metal-y colour, so I've used scale 75 black metal. In order to be more neat and avoid making mistakes, I've used a smaller brush to apply the colour where the tracks and wheels contact each other, and then I do the rest with a larger brush. Something, something, right tool for the job or something like that. This is not especially difficult, but I would suggest going slowly and taking your time with it. Also, probably obviously, don't be afraid to rotate the tank around to whichever direction makes it easier to paint. And now for some more washers. I used Army Painter Light Tone on the jacking block, just like with the other bits of wood, though this time I didn't add any dark tone. I did add it to the wheel rims though. I'm trying not to be too messy with this, but it's okay if some of it goes onto the tracks and the middle bits of the wheels. In fact it's actually desirable for it to go into the gap between the rim and the rest of the wheel. I also applied some of the dark tone to the sprocket teeth that you can see through the tracks, just to darken them down a bit, simple enough. Then I applied another layer of varnish, this time satin, because I grabbed that instead of the gloss. It's still pretty much the same thing really, and it will still protect the layers beneath it from the second round of enamels. I decided to try a little bit of the MIG Productions light rust wash on the tracks, but I didn't really like it, so I removed most of it. I'm sure there's a speck of it remaining here and there, but that's okay. 
I follow that by applying MIG Productions Subtle Dirt Filter, which is quite thin, obviously because it's a filter. That's pretty much what I want though, and I slop it all over the tracks and wheels. I don't want this to be too heavy, and it is pretty hard to get this stuff to go on heavy at all. It's basically all over the tracks, and I definitely got it on the surrounding areas too. In fact, I tried to make it look a bit splattery toward the rear of the hull, where I would imagine bits of thin, watery mud would leave speckles as they're flung off the tracks. It's not a mud effect, really, it's just a light dirtiness, maybe a slightly dusty look, and that's what I wanted. It's only on the lower areas of the tank, and what I've tried to go for here is a tank that's been used a little bit, but not very heavily. Maybe it's been driven on some slightly dusty tracks, and maybe it's been driven through some watery mud, but nothing too thick and chunky. And maybe it's been parked in a shed for a while without a cleaning. So I haven't added a sort of shiny, worn effect on the tracks, like you might see on one that's been moving recently, because I want this to represent a tank that's been just kind of sitting for a while. That's my story. I added some MIG Productions fuel stains around these little hatches, which I'm assuming are fuel tank lids. They look like somewhere you might put some sort of fluid anyway. I tried to make it look like it had run down the hull a bit, but it doesn't have much of a slope to it. Oh well. I applied a coat of MIG Lucky Matte Varnish, which gives the model a nice matte finish. Oh, that's a surprise! Mm-hmm. That's the Hobby Boss VK4502P Vorna in 35th scale finally completed. I'm pretty happy with the result I've got here. I mean, it's nothing super fancy or anything, but I think it's pretty decent. I would say that all of the techniques I've used here are pretty basic, and that's fine. You don't have to do anything fancy, as long as you're happy with the result, and in the end it's done, and I think it looks really good. Also, I no longer have a half-painted model just sitting around gathering dust. Now I've got a painted one gathering dust. I didn't face any real difficulties in painting this model. As I said, I did pretty simple techniques and it is basically just grey. Not that there's anything wrong with that. However, it could have been easier if I'd left the tracks off and painted them separately. I am kind of used to painting tracks on small models like 15mm scale, so I don't find painting them on the tank to be that much of a challenge, especially in a bigger scale like this one. So painting them separately wouldn't really make it that much easier. It would save a bunch of time though. On the other hand, these are individual links, and it is a lot easier to glue them together on the tank. So I would say that whether it's better to paint the tracks separately or not is really up to the individual painter. I guess I don't really have anything to say about this other than what I've already said and what you can see with your own eyes. I enjoyed painting this, for some reason people think I hate painting, but it is one of the most satisfying parts of the hobby, and it's just a good relaxing thing to do at my own pace, which is a slow pace. Anyway, if you're interested in replicating what I've done here, for whatever reason, or you're just looking for a starting point in choosing some colours for a similar model, I've put a list of the colours I used in the description below. Except of course for that brown on the machine gun, because I don't remember what colour that was. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe here on YouTube for the low low price of zero dollars. Or if you have the means, and you want to help a herbert herbert herb do herbert herbert herb things, and see my videos a bit early before there are any ads, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon, and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have a fantastic day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.